powerful storms rage in Saturn's atmosphere, the effects of which last for centuries. Powerful storms are raging on Saturn. They may not be as spectacular as, say, Jupiter's Great Red Spot. But they can last just as long, detailed observations reaching deep into Saturn's cloud layers have shown. We have never witnessed anything like it on Earth. Storms on Saturn, which form every 20 or 30 years, can cover large areas of the planet and can last for months. Due to their characteristic color they are sometimes called great white spots. However, the mechanism of their formation and, above all, reaching such monstrous sizes is still unclear to us. The history of their sightings begins in 1876. Six have been recorded so far. We took a closer look at the last one. It developed at the time when NASA's Cassini spacecraft was in orbit around Saturn. This megastorm actually lasted about 200 days. However, even after these storms have subsided, their remnants are still present in Saturn's atmosphere. One manifestation of this is chemical anomalies that are still difficult to explain. This was shown by analyzers carried out with the help of radio telescopes. These types of tools are necessary because only when we use them do we notice what is important in this context. With an ordinary telescope, we can only see the extremely hazy atmosphere of this planet. The very large array radio telescope located in New Mexico was used for the latest analysis. Astronomers had hoped to find traces of the last storm in Saturn's atmosphere, but to their surprise they found remnants not only of all six, the first of which erupted some 130 years ago, but even of a storm we had not known existed until now. Saturn's atmosphere is mostly hydrogen and helium, but there is also water, methane, and ammonia. The upper layers of the clouds there consist of ammonia and ice. However, recent studies have shown that in areas where megastorms raged, lower concentrations of ammonia were observed below the cloud layer. Interestingly, well below these places, ammonia levels turned out to be unusually high. It would therefore follow that there is some mechanism, something like an elevator, that brings ammonia into the depths of the planet. However, scientists see a potential explanation for this situation. Well, it is possible that we are dealing here with a kind of ammonia hail. As a result, hailstones of ammonia fall into the lower atmosphere, but stop at some point because they re-liquid. The most interesting and intriguing fact is that this process can last even more than 100 years after the storm itself has passed. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Science Advances. A small amphibian that can rebuild its brain after an injury helps uncover the secrets of organ regeneration. The Mexican salamander is famous for its ability to regenerate limbs, heart and spinal cord. In 1964, scientists observed that adults can rebuild part of the brain, even if a large part of it has been completely removed. Now, scientists have identified the different types of cells involved in the regeneration of this little amphibian's brain. Researchers have been wondering for years how some animals can regenerate parts of their bodies. This curiosity leads to a simple question. Could man be capable of the same? Can similar processes also be started in humans? If scientists could understand the mechanisms that give these animals their amazing abilities, it could change the face of medicine. The Mexican salamander, Ambystoma mexicanum, also known as the Mexican axolotl or the Mexican salamander, is endowed with an unusual feature. It has the ability to regenerate almost every part of the body. Losing a limb, an eye, part of a heart, or even part of a brain is not a problem. Organs and limbs grow back. This amphibian is found naturally only in one of the lakes near Mexico City. Due to its abilities, it is a valuable laboratory animal, 
but it is also kept by aquarists around the world. In a new study published in the journal Science, Scientists from the Federal University of Technology in Zurich and the Institute of Molecular Pathology in Vienna wanted to see if the Mexican snakehead can regenerate all types of cells present in the brain, including the connections that connect one region brain with another. As part of their research, the researchers created an atlas of the cells that make up part of the axolotl's brain shedding light on both how it regenerates and how the brain evolved across species. Different cell types have different functions. They are able to specialize in certain roles because each type expresses different genes. Understanding what types of cells are found in the brain and what they actually do helps to clarify the overall picture of how the brain functions. It also allows scientists to make comparisons within evolution and try to find biological trends among different species. One way to understand which cells express which genes is to use a technique called single-cell RNA sequencing (screnaseq). This tool allows scientists to count the number of active genes in each cell of a particular sample. This provides knowledge about the activities performed by each cell. This tool has been instrumental in understanding the types of cells that exist in animal brains. Scientists have used screnaseq in fish, reptiles, mice and even humans. However, one major piece of the puzzle of brain evolution was missing. Amphibians. As Ashley Maynard of the Federal University of Technology in Zurich admitted, her team decided to focus on the axolotl telin brain. In humans, the telencephalon is the largest part of the brain and contains an area called the neocortex that plays a key role in cognition and behavior. Over the course of evolution, the neocortex has grown significantly in size compared to other areas of the brain. Similarly, the cell types that make up the forebrain have diversified greatly over time, making this region an intriguing area for research. Researchers used single-cell RNA sequencing to identify the different types of cells that make up the axolotl's forebrain including different types of neurons and cells that can divide into more or develop into different types of cells. We identified which genes are active when progenitor cells become neurons and found that many of them pass through an intermediate cell type called neuroblasts before becoming mature neurons. Maynard said, a team of scientists tested the regenerative abilities of these unusual amphibians by removing a piece of their telencephalon. Using the screnaseq method, the researchers were able to capture and sequence all new cells at various stages of regeneration, from 1 to 12 weeks after the injury. Ultimately, they found that all the cell types that had been removed were completely restored. We have observed that brain regeneration proceeds in three main phases. The first phase began with a rapid increase in the number of progenitor cells, and a small fraction of them activated the wound healing process. In the second phase, the progenitor cells began to differentiate into neuroblasts. Finally, in phase three, the neuroblasts differentiated into the same types of neurons that were originally lost, Maynard emphasized. Surprisingly, the researchers also observed that the severed neural connections between the removed area and other areas of the brain were restored again. This indicates that the regenerated area has regained its original function. Adding amphibians to the evolutionary puzzle allows scientists to deduce how the brain and its different types of cells have changed over time, and what mechanisms are behind regeneration.
When we compared our axolotl data with data from other species, we found that the cells in their forebrain showed strong similarities to the mammalian hippocampus. The area of the brain responsible for memory formation, and the olfactory cortex, the area of the brain responsible for smelling. We even found some similarities in one type of axolotl cell to the neocortex, an area of the brain known for spatial perception, thinking and reasoning in humans. These similarities indicate that these areas of the brain may be evolutionarily protected in the course of evolution, Maynard noted. While our study sheds light on the process of brain regeneration, including what genes are involved in this process and how cells ultimately become neurons, we still don't know what external signals initiate this process. Furthermore, we don't know if the processes we identified are still available to animals that evolved later, such as mice or humans, she added. Identifying all cell types in the axolotl brain could help pave the way for innovative research in regenerative medicine. The brains of mice and humans have largely lost their ability to regenerate. Medical interventions for severe brain damage currently focus on drugs and stem cell therapies to enhance or promote repair. Investigating the genes and cell types that allow axolotls to achieve near-perfect regeneration could hold the key to improving the treatment of severe injuries and unlocking the potential for recovery.